Scenario 16, Human Development. Real Scene 2, Miracles. A transgression of a law of nature by a particular volition of a deity or by the interposition of some invisible agent. David Hearn. My goal. Upon completion of scenario 16, I'll understand how to describe changes using comparatives and either the present tense, the past tense, or the present perfect tense. I will also learn about zero and first conditional, as well as the past continuous tense. Through the reading material, I'll learn about the phenomenon of miracles. Introductory Questions 1. In your own words, what is a miracle? 2. Have you ever experienced a miracle in your personal life? 3. Do you believe miracles exist? Why or why not? Introduction The word miracle is derived from the Latin word miraculum, meaning something wonderful. According to many religions, a miracle is a striking interposition of divine intervention by God causing the ordinary operations of the universe or the course of nature to be overruled, suspended or modified. One must keep in mind that in Judaism, Christianity, Islam and other faiths, people have different definitions of the word miracle. Even within a specific religion, there is often more than one definition of this term. Sometimes the term miracle may refer to the action of a supernatural being that is not God. In this case, the term divine intervention refers specifically to the direct involvement of a deity. The annual miracle of the fire that doesn't burn has been attested in the Church of the Holy Sepulchre in the city of Jerusalem since the 5th century. Listening. Conversation. Hi, Joan. How have you been? Very well, thanks. Are you still in college? Yes, I am. I'll finish next year. You look different. Have you changed your hair? Yes. It's longer and I've lost weight. Wow, you look terrific. Thanks, you too. It's like a miracle. Grammar Structure 1 Describing Changes Using Present Tense A. I'm not in business anymore. B. I've lost weight. Using Past Tense A. I got married. B. I changed my job. Using present perfect tense. A. I've cut my hair. B. I've grown a mustache. Using comparatives. A. My belly is bigger now. B. My life is better now. Writing. Exercise. How have you changed in the last three years? Select the statements that apply to you. A. I've lost weight. B. I've changed my hairstyle. C. I moved to another city. D. I got married. E. My life is better now. Miracles as Acts of God Adherents of many religions assert that miracles, if established, are proof of the existence of an omnipotent, omniscient and all-benevolent God. In this sense, a miracle can be defined as a violation of the laws of nature by a supernatural being. According to their logic, 1. There are events that seem to be miracles. 2. The best explanation for these events is that they were performed by a supernatural being. 3. Therefore, there is probably a supernatural being, i.e. God, that performs what appear to be miracles. A number of criticisms of this point of view exist. 
While the existence of miracles may imply the existence of a supernatural being, that supernatural being might not be omnipotent, omniscient, and all-benevolent God. It could be any supernatural being. Some critics argue that miracles, if established, are evidence that a perfect God does not exist. They point out that such a being would not want to or need to violate his own laws of nature. Roman Catholic theologians accept this reasoning. They conclude that the miracles must be due to the actions of an omnipotent God because they have previously proven that there is a single omnipotent omniscient God. The laws of nature are inferred from empirical evidence. Thus, if an accepted law of nature is violated, it could simply be that the law is incorrect due to flawed observations and not a supernatural event. Until such time as mankind completely understands all the laws of nature, it is impossible to determine if an event is a genuine miracle or a natural event that has yet to be understood. Grammar Structure 2 Zero and First Conditional Zero Conditional The zero conditional structure is used to talk about something which is always true. It always happens on the condition that something else happens. For example, if it rains a lot, our garden floods. You have to buy your own drinks if you fly on a budget airline. First conditional. The first conditional structure is used to talk about something which will or may happen in the future as a result of something else. For example, if it rains tomorrow, I'll stay at home. She'll be late if she doesn't hurry up. You might not pass your exams if you watch television all the time. Miracles as described by the Bible The description of most miracles in the Hebrew Bible or Old Testament and in the Christian New Testament are the same as the modern-day definition of the word God intervenes in the laws of nature. A literal reading of the Bible shows that there are a number of ways miracles occur. God may suspend or speed up the laws of nature to produce a supernatural occurrence. God can create matter out of nothing. God can breathe life into inanimate matter. The Bible does not explain how these miracles happen. The Bible also attributes many natural occurrences to God, such as the sun rising and setting and rain falling. Today, many Orthodox Jews, most Christians and most Muslims adhere to this view of miracles. This view is generally rejected by non-Orthodox Jews, liberal Christians and Unitarian Universalists. Some events commonly understood to be miraculous may not be instances of the impossible. For instance, Consider the parting of the Sea of Reeds in Hebrew Yam Su, often mistranslated as the Red Sea. This incident is said to have occurred when Moses and Israelites fled from bondage in Egypt to begin their exodus to the Promised Land. The book of Exodus never says that the Red Sea split in an immediate fashion. The passage waters as a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left could be figurative. The text could be interpreted to say that God caused a strong wind to slowly drive the shallow waters to land overnight. In this interpretation, there is no indication that God pushed apart the sea as it is shown in many films. Rather, the miracle would be that Moses crossed this precise place at exactly the right time and that the pursuing Egyptian army then drowned when the wind stopped and the waters rushed back in. Most events later described as miracles are not labelled as such by the Bible. Rather, the text simply describes what happened. Often these narratives will attribute the cause of these events to God. Grammar Structure 3 Past versus Past Continuous Number 1 Use the past to set the scene of a story before describing what happened. It was raining. I was walking in the park. 
some kids were playing football nearby. Suddenly, number two, use the past continuous to talk about an action which happened for some time in the past and was then interrupted. Use the past simple tense to talk about the interruption. I was cooking dinner when suddenly there was a knock at the door. Number three, use the past continuous to talk about events that were in progress at a certain time. At five o'clock yesterday afternoon, I was driving home from work. Listening. Conversation. What are you going to do after you get out of college? I'd really like to travel a little bit. Really? Where would you like to go? Well, I want to go to Jerusalem. That's very far. Do you know anybody there? Not really. I just want to see the land of miracles where Jesus once lived. Well, that sounds very interesting. Lucky you. Grammar structure two. Infinitives. An infinitive is the base form of the verb. The infinitive form of a verb is the form that follows to. To plus base form of the verb. They have several functions. One, they are used as subject and subject complements. For example, to know me is to love me. Two, they are used as objects following certain verbs. For example. I wanted to tell you how much I appreciated your gift. Three, they can be used as a shortened form of in order to. For example, you must take this medicine in order to get well. Four, they can sometimes be used as objects of their own. For example, I was asked to make a dessert for the dinner. Writing exercise. A. Complete these sentences stating your own wishes. One, I. To travel to the United States. Two, I. To have my own apartment. Three, I. To get married. Four, I. To make a lot of money. Miracle. Another point of view. Theologians of the Old and New Testament religions consider only God willed contravention of the laws of nature to be true miracles. However, they admit others can do and have done things which contravene the laws of nature. Such acts are attributed to diabolical powers and are called false miracles. Many outside of the biblical based religions believe it is possible to transgress laws of nature through acts of will in consort with paranormal or occult powers. They generally refer to these transgressions not as miracles but as magic. All religions report numerous and equally credible miracles. The Scottish philosopher, economist, and historian David Hume compares deciding amongst religions based on their miracles to a judge evaluating contradictory but equally reliable testimonies. Each religion is as credible as the next. Curiously, the most ancient and barbarous the people are, the greater the tendency for stories of miracles to flourish. This trend could be used to argue against the existence of miracles. Typically miraculous events are observed among ignorant and barbarous nations, or if a civilized nation supports validity of the event, the nation will be found to have received the information from ignorant and barbarous ancestors. While there are still many people today who believe in miracles, no modern historian fills his or her books with accounts of miraculous events. It's unlikely that the report of even one miracle would make its way into texts today. Indeed, only that media which caters to the superstitious and uneducated, such as the tabloid National Enquirer, and a portion of the mass media, would even think of reporting an alleged miracle without a healthy dose of scepticism.
No scholarly journal would consider an author rational if he or she were to include stories of miracles in their writing. A modern scholar dismisses all such reports as either lies or cases of collective hallucination. David Hume was aware that no matter how scientific or rational a civilization became, belief in miracles would never be eradicated. Human nature is also such that we love even more to be the bearer of a story of the marvellous and the wondrous. The more wondrous our story, the more merit we can attain. Vanity, delusion and zealotry have led to more than one fraud supporting a holy cause with huge embellishments and out-out lies about a miraculous event. Hume's primary argument against miracles, however, was modelled after what he and others called common-sense Christianity. Mr Hume, along with John Tillotson, the Archbishop of Canterbury, William Chillingworth, an English theologian, and Bishop Edward Stillingfleet, argued against the Catholic doctrine of transubstantiation, or the changing of bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. These theologians argued that the idea contradicts common sense. The Catholics claim that the bread and wine used in the communion ceremony is changed in substance so that what is bread and wine to all the senses is, in fact, the body and blood of Christ. According to them, if it looks like bread, smells like bread, tastes like bread, then it is bread. To believe otherwise is to give up the basis for all knowledge based on sense experience. Anything could be other than it appears to the senses. This is an argument not about certainty, but about reasonable belief. If the Catholics are right about transubstantiation, then a book might really be a bishop, for example, or a purr might actually be Westminster Cathedral. The attributes of a thing would give no clues to its substance. Everything we perceive could be completely unrelated to what it is. If the senses can't be trusted in this one case, they can't be trusted in any. To believe in transubstantiation is to abandon the basis of all knowledge, which is sensory experience. Research Spot Look for more information about 1. Creative Miracles 2. Faith versus Science 3. Miracle Doctors